Connor, just can you give me your sense of kind of where, where the group is at? Once again, my teammates come up short. I mean, what's next for him to do? Play goal? <laughs> and honestly, he's going to have to play goal, play defense. It's, I mean, but the, the next, there is the next move he can do. He's going to request a trade, guys. It's coming. Uh, welcome to Honest Press Conferences, where we say what all those executives, coaches, or players would love to say out loud. All right. We got one more guy to talk to, and his team is very much struggling. And that's Mr. John Falkowski is Connor McDavid. Oh, oh shoot. Uh, it would, yeah, it would help if you actually uh, put the cameras and the microphones over here, buddy. Uh, you know, this is not how you, <laughs> this is how you really screw up a press conference to, from the get go, right? Just like my team screws up everything. You know, aside from Leon, what do I have? Tyson Barry? Yeah, cool. Learn how to play defense, buddy. You suck at it. And then you have uh, the two, the two clowns in net. Whoa, did that cop? Co Coxinen and co whatever his name is, and then uh, uh, you have uh, that other guy that's old, as old as dirt itself, um, Smith. Yeah, learn, learn how to play net because you guys can't, you guys both suck. And you know what would be nice if other players on this team, aside from Leon and I, could actually score, you know, and, and give us some sort of support. I mean, Nugent Hopkins here and there, yeah, okay, Yamamoto. You were a first-round draft pick. Start playing like one. Zach Cassian, what do you do other than fight and check? Do you, do you know how to score? Do you, do you know what offense is? Do you know how to spell offense, buddy? Oh, that's right. You can't skate. Ah, that's the problem. You can't skate. Maybe I should teach you some skating lessons in the offseason. You know, help, help, help churn those legs, get them going. Yeah, that would help, right? Yeah. And you know what else would help? If I had a general manager that knew how to construct the team and help build it up the defense and the goaltending and not sign Cody Cece, who is an absolute dumpster fire of a defenseman, and bring in – how do you trade assets for Duncan Keith, who looks like he's going to be the crypt keeper in about two years? What are you doing, Holland? Your tenure in Detroit towards the end of it was horrendous. And now you come here and you sabotage my chances of ever winning a Stanley Cup? You know what? When this season ends, you better trade me. I'm pulling a Dennis Lemieux. And for anybody who doesn't know who that is, go watch Slapshot, you morons. I guess I'll take some questions. <laughs> well, I got uh, some Jack Eichel vibes there. Oh, <laughs> uh, you think? Oh, uh, you get Jack Eichel vibes because Jack Eichel was just as annoyed as I was at my team's <laughs> stupid management. No, oh, let's bring in Ken Holland. Oh, he's such a genius. Right. That's why he sabotaged Detroit for the last near 10 years. But, yeah. Look at look at what happened. It took Steve Eiserman to come in and reset everything for them to become a better team. Mark, you go. Okay. Jack, if this team does not win a playoff series, are you going to request a trade? You just called him Jack. Oh, sorry, what Jack. Is, Jesus. What are you doing? You're calling me Jack? <laughs> you know what? In my I notes, I was thinking you're right just now, like Jack Eichel you're right now. You're calling me Jack Eichel? Are you kidding? I'm the best damn player in the world, and I'm the most skilled player to ever play this game, and you're calling me Jack Eichel? What the hell well, is wrong with you? Well, you are kind of starting to Jack. sound like him a little bit. <laughs> oh, I sound like Jack Eichel? You sound like a moron. You sound like you don't you don't deserve the job you have. Uh, yeah. Not, yeah. not even sure and if it's sound, a job, but I'm not like making money. You sound like my teammates. Oh, here, Connor, here's the puck. Let me just sit back and watch you. You do all the work, Connor. We'll take some credit. <laughs> yeah, Jack Eichel, Jack Eichel can't hold my jock on his best day. And this front office can't build up a team. So now I'm stuck here in the middle of Siberia where the weather is garbage for the vast majority of the year, hoping – that one day my team can find the balls to trade me to somewhere. And you know what? I'm probably going to request a trade because I'm tired of this garbage. It's madness. It's stupid. It's nonsense. I'm tired of it. I've given you how many chances to build up a team. I almost carried you guys to the Western Conference Finals in my second year in which I won the scoring trophy and the MVP. Hi, hi. If my career ended today, I would be a Hall of Famer and there's nothing you can do about it. So suck it. Um,
Um, yeah, it, it's time for it's time for me to move on if nothing changes with this team. So I, I probably will be requesting one after this season because I'm sick and tired of this garbage. Um, Connor, it, a lot of uh, media talk about you know you and Leon Drysaddle, you know one and two in scoring, um, kind of like you know Batman and Robin. Uh, what, what's your relationship with like with him like? Um, you know, and and do you guys? you know, think it's fun kind of battling out to see who can win the, you know, Art Ross or, you know, who is the most valuable is. And um, does that kind of add a little more fuel for you, that extra fun factor playing with him? Yeah, he's the Messier to my Gretzky, basically. Yeah, you could say Batman and Robin, of course. Yeah, basically. Yeah, Le- Leon thinks that he can he can stay with me, but I'm the better player. I don't. I shouldn't have to whisper that, right? I'm the better player. And it, it, it's it's the case. And I don't care about Leon's, you know, MVP in, in 2020 and a scoring trophy in 2020. Great for him. Great job. You know, you had a great year. I missed some time that year. And I was still on a, on a close two points per game pace that year. So, buddy, did you see what I did last year? Over 100 points in 53 games. 105 points was that? Yeah. It's kind of like Mario Lemieux 1996-97 numbers right there, right? Because it is. Because I'm that damn good. And don't you ever forget it. Because I am heaven sent. I am McJesus for a reason. And if this team wants me to stay here and wants me to help bring them back to the glory days of Gretzky and Messier, then you know what? Maybe they should go and uh, start building this team up because we don't know what they're doing. They hired an incompetent dolt to come in and, you know, build up this team. And what does he do? He brings in two of the worst defensemen in the league. Uh, I don't know how Duncan Keith was supposed to help out. What was he supposed to do? Give us pep talks in the locker room before the game and reminisce about 2010, 2013, and 2015. That's great. That doesn't help us now, jackass. Um, But, yeah, I'm tired of this. Give me – Give me something to work with. Go get Mark andre Fleury if you want to do that. That might help. But go get a damn defenseman. Why didn't you sign Alex Petrangelo when he was available? Durr. Yeah, that was a dur before whoever asked for in the comments section. I saw you. <laughs> All right. Con- Connor, obviously this is a very tough time for you, but we're going to let you go. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, and I uh, hope you enjoyed New York. Yeah, you know I, what? I, hope, I hope I enjoy New York too. Hopefully, it's better than the shit weather in Siberia here. <laughs> I noticed. I noticed a lot of the a lot of the comments on that when you're doing that. People say, "Come, you know, come, Rangers or whatever." But when you really think about it, a McDavid a McDavid trade to your team, it's honestly, it's it's not real. It's really almost not worth it. And I say it because you know how much you would have to give up to get him. So I know like a lot of the Ranger fans here would be above the moon to get Connor McDavid, but you realize you're, you're talking like guys like Adam Fox. You're not talking like, you know, Zach Jones, Niels Lundquist and, no. you know, Phil Heedle. The trade would be, the trade would cost so much. It's almost not worth it to trade for him. That That's my view. If he ever asks for a trade, I don't, yeah. I don't see, I don't see how <clears throat> any team can trade for him and keep foundational pieces to keep you competitive, you know, in in the future so how how do you ever think of a Connor mcdavid trade could ever be worth it to the oilers that it's was, never going to be worth it for, for, there's for no way person. you can get enough pieces to replace Connor mcdavid i mean for yeah that's why for either side it would be it would be really it would be really tough to do it's like so if you want if you want Mc, if you want mcdavid um your best chance is hope you know he plays out his contract and you could sign him in free agency. Um, and I know, you know, Roman Cello just wrote he would trade Fox for McDavid, but that, that's fine. It's Fox, but it's a lot, it's a lot more than Fox. It's, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's not, it really, it really almost, it really almost wouldn't be worth it to trade for him. He's, he's that good. He's the best, like Phil said, he's the best player to, to ever play the game skill wise. He's the best player in the league. Um, so if you want to trade for Connor McDavid, yeah, yeah, Fox, Tristurkin, whatever else. But then, yeah, what do you have after that? No goaltending, and you have holes in your lineup everywhere else. I mean, it doesn't. Whoever is going not, to be offering a trade for him when he requests a trade, and I think it's going to happen, is 
uh, and I do like so far what I'm reading on that one, Nick, <laughs> is that whoever's going to be one of the teams that he requests a trade to, they're operating from the position of strength. Just sit back, twiddle your thumbs, and hope you get away with just Peyton Kreps, Alex, uh, <clears throat> Alex, um, Leon Drysaddle uh, gets traded before Connor yeah. McDavid does. Yeah, it, I know. Never. But if if McDavid gets frustrated enough, he might want out. I think Leon Drysaddle yeah. gets traded before he does. I I I, don't, I just I think he's the McDavid's the better player. He's younger, and you know honestly, Leon Drysaddle's next contract is going to be massive. And yeah. you you know what he he's going to be worth every penny that he gets, but how can they afford those two contracts? So yeah. one of those yeah. guys has got to go. You got to keep the better one, and it's. McDavid. I still can't believe that. By the way, you got Connor McDavid and Leon Drysaddle. They're barely staying alive in the eight spot right now. They can't win a playoff series, and they're just going to waste these two guys. I oh think, my goodness! I think he if he ever did ask to be traded, I think it would be best to trade him because again, if you're going to if if you're going to trade him for a bunch of pieces, it's just going to like, so I guess what I'm trying to say is like, if you're going to trade McDavid, it's probably better that for him to trade him to like Colorado for Nathan McKinnon, rather than trading him to the Minnesota wild for, you know, for eight pieces, because I don't think you're going to get, I don't think you're going to get the value. But, but, why, but why would Edmonton do that though? Because then at that point you're trading for an older player. That's also going to require a massive, massive contract in what, two years? That makes no yeah. sense. For yeah. And, and, really, and this it, is it. Edmonton is a two player team, two great players. And, two <clears throat> load of crap. That, and that's the problem. Your your Nugent Hopkins has not become the number one overall pick that he should have been. He's been what a 60 point player. That's a guy that should be a, a point per game player or, or better with, with his draft pedigree. And he was a good player in, in at the top of a, a pretty good draft. And then your, your defense. I need more from Bouchard. We're yeah. broker. Uh, I mean, they don't know how to draft defense. They don't know what goaltending is. They passed on uh, <laughs> on Jesper Wallstedt. Yep. They have no idea of what goaltending is. When was the last time they drafted a good goaltender? Bill Ranford? Like, uh, drafted. Oh, well, because Cujo won him a playoff series. Yeah, but Cujo uh, Tommy Sala won him the playoff series. Tommy Sala Dwayne Rolison won him three playoff series. None of them were drafted by them. Yeah, might be Bill Radford. Devin Dubnik I, was a good goalie, but not with them. I, I I would I would think that if I don't I don't think it will come this year. You, even if they miss the playoffs no. or if they go out in the first round, but I think if 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 next year they also they also fail, I think that's when maybe. Maybe he would request a trade. I, I would really, really, really be. I know we make jokes, but I would really be shocked if he if he requested a trade at the end of this year. I, I would. I don't, um, I don't think it's there. I, I'm saying it's it's coming. If it's not this year, because we said it, we said this with Eichel last year. And then, by the way, we're going to do some editorials in a second. But by, by if, the way, Drysidle has a modified no uh, a modified. Uh, 10 team trade list that kicks in after this season. So if they wanted to move dry sidle, um, the time would be now. I don't think they would do it, but I could honestly see them moving dry sidle before McDavid. How many years does he have left on his deal? Three Dreisaitl? years left on his deal, 8.5 million. And, yeah, and he's, he's that's, a steal. That, that's a yeah. steal. That is that, a yeah. Best contract in the league bar not yeah yeah because he's putting up mcdavid like numbers for three to four million dollars less it's 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 stupid that's one of the best contracts signed ever probably and 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 in and in three years that contract he's gonna make i think he's gonna make much more than than 12 and a half on his next contract i think he's he's gonna make at least 13 maybe 13 and a half yeah yeah especially with the cap going up yeah yep because I don't, I don't know how you could justify fourteen million in 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 this day and age, but you could definitely make a case for thirteen. Well, guys, so what do you think? By the way, with the honest press conferences, you think that Connor McDavid is justified to be as frustrated as he is? I think Mika Zibanejad is getting a little bit too confident, and you think Lou is going to have Gary Bettman and schedule makers uh, have to send him a horse's head? Throw it all in the comments down below. 
If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.